Hey everyone, Maze here, bringing you episode two of my Waking the Sleeping Demons Dynasty, my DePaul Dynasty. In this episode, we're going to take you through the next six games on DePaul's schedule, probably six of the toughest conference games DePaul's going to play all year. Starts with our big Monday game against Connecticut. Uh, UConn, the Huskies, they are eight and four, just on the outside of the top 25. So this is a very big game for them. Uh, and then toward the end of the episode, kind of based on what the response has been, uh, and some of the comments I've gotten from all of you. So I really appreciate you watching this video and giving me some feedback. Uh, I'm going to go through one of the things that definitely makes this dynasty unique, and that is that I have real players and real recruits in this game. That is true of all 11 teams in the Big East. All 11 rosters have been edited. On most rosters, six to 10 players have been edited to include real players, and those players' ratings have been uh, also changed to kind of match how they play, their playing style, how good they are. I spent quite a bit of time and focus on the Big East, but also I wanted some of the best players in the country and some of the best teams to be represented as well. So I also, outside of the Big East, went through about 15 other teams uh, and in total edited probably right around 100 players in this game, including some of the best recruits and some of the best returning players nationally. Uh, some of the top transfers that you can look forward to seeing next year on the hard court in college basketball. So in this episode, I want to highlight that in the Big East. Some of the best players that are in here, you'll see that in the league news and some of the top performers night by night in the Big East. And then at the end of the episode, I'll go through the first of the Power Five conferences that I want to highlight. That's the ACC. So I'll be looking at some of the teams that I've edited. And if you stay all the way until the end of the video, I will also be asking for how you can include what you want to see on future episodes of the Waking the Sleeping Demons Dynasty. Let's get started. So as I said, big Monday in the Big East. We have five conference games, including some really important matchups for teams, uh, some teams that need wins. I'm looking at Marquette. I'm looking at someone like Seton Hall, who is 0-2 so far in the conference, some very big games. Let's sim through and see what we have. And this will pop up at the end of every simulation, uh, the opportunity to watch the game. There is a 2D game simulation that you can watch. We will do that uh, for certain games I want to highlight on the season. Uh, that'll also include the Final Four and Championship games. Um, but for this one, we're just going to simulate it, so we're going to cancel. Go back here and let's see some of the results in the Big East before I simulate that game. So things went pretty chalk across the Big East on this Monday. We had the best teams, all home teams, uh, win all of their games. You had Xavier, nice seven-point win over Seton Hall. Good 12-point win for the Wildcats, who are now recently ranked. A good win over Butler. Uh, Georgetown, 90-77 to over Marquette. Uh, the Hoyas just keep rolling, and it's on the back of Caden Rice and Aminu Muhammad. Uh, we'll talk about them in a minute, but you can see their stats on the right side of the screen. And then a five-point win for St. John's. As I mentioned, Georgetown, a great start to the season. That continues 51 combined points for Aminu Muhammad and Caden Rice. 10 assists for Dante Harris. Just a great game all around there. Um, you're seeing also some great true freshmen really stepping up for their teams, including Omar Stanley for St. John's. Uh, some injuries that St. John's is dealing with in the front court, including an injury to Isaiah Moore, which means increased playing time for Omar Stanley. He went out, collected 15 boards against Creighton. Uh, that's a good game against a tough Creighton team. St. John's led all season by Posh Alexander. He's putting up 20 a night, 25 points again for him this evening. All right, and now on to the DePaul-UConn matchup. A big one again for DePaul. Uh, we've struggled on the road. As you've probably read in my dynasty, we haven't won a road game in over two years. Uh, our last ACC road win was probably now more like two and a half seasons ago. Uh, so any chance you get an opportunity to win on the road is big in the Big East. Uh, and against a good team, even better. This would also take our record back to 500, but a tough game. Let's see what we can do here. Hey, we put up a fight, 83-91. That's a tough loss, but nice to see the offense come through. It seemed the last few games, you know, the offense was really kind of struggling. Uh, so nice to see that we were able to kind of hang with UConn in that game. Uh, let's go to the box score. I want to just break this one down a little bit more. See, seems like it was the bench that really stepped up for UConn. I mean, you've got... You know, true freshman Jordan Hawkins, who's averaging 12 a game. He had 17 in this one with four assists. Uh, Ekok Ekok, I, I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly. Uh, he had a huge game. He's had a pretty good start to the year. 16 points, five rebounds, three assists. 
what's really been the engine for UConn. I mean, they're returning four of their five starters, but Isaiah Whaley, who is one of the best defensive players in the country, getting him back was big. Uh, a double-double effort. It just seems like something he's doing every night. Uh, a good game for him. That's a really tough matchup for us. Uh, he looks like he beat up on Nick Ogenda pretty well in this game. But nice to see the starters play well. Another game where Marquise Jacobs and Jalen Terry are sharing the backcourt. They went for 28 combined in this one. I'd like to see Marquise Jacobs do a little better job of taking care of the basketball. Five turnovers in this one. That's a little rough. Uh, and also nice to see a great effort from Romeo Weems. 14 points, three rebounds, four assists. An all-around good game for him. And he's all-around a very good player. Nice to see him playing uh, up at that level. On the bench, though, I, you're looking at those plus-minus numbers. I mean, we just got beat when our starters weren't in. But it just seems we really struggled against their bench. Uh, and also just didn't do a very good job taking care of the basketball and staying out of foul trouble. 20 turnovers and 24 fouls in this one. That's not going to get it done against a good disciplined team like UConn, a Danny Hurley team who's not going to beat themselves. And honestly, I'm nervous that that may be the overarching theme for this episode is uh, in a losing effort for, for DePaul. Uh, it seems like we, you know, playing well, but we've got some tough games here. And, and no doubt this is definitely one of them against UConn. Nice to see a good game from us, though. Just actually simulated through my birthday. I'm just realizing January 3rd of 2022, I'll be years old. Another five games on Wednesday, January 4th. And this is us taking on the best team in the conference. We're hosting Villanova, uh, but they're 4-0, playing great after a tough start to the non-conference for them when they didn't have Colin Gillespie. Had some really difficult non-conference games as well, but now it seemed to really be rolling. I'm, I'm nervous about this one as well. Um, looking throughout the rest of the conference, again, I think a couple important games here. At Marquette, they don't want to start 0-4 in the Big East. That, that's not um, what they want to see this year. Uh, that's an important game for them with Butler on the road. Creighton, very important game hosting Georgetown. I think I saw an 80-piece out of Seton Hall. Let's see if that was enough for them. And it was, wow, two-point win for Seton Hall, 87-85. Good game uh, on the road against St. John's. And after that simulation, a four-point loss to the Wildcats. Good performance at Win Trust for DePaul. Nice to see, you know, definitely playing well at home. We've got to improve on the road, of course. But this is a great team, a great test for us. In my opinion, the best team in the Big East this season. Uh, and a 78-74 win for Villanova. Uh, you see... The younger Archie Diacono, Chris Archie Diacono, adding 10 off the bench. Uh, just a bench contributor right now, really just a shooter, was two for two on the night. That's big. Story of the night seems to be Colin Gillespie and freshman Jordan Lingino taking advantage of Marquise Jacobs and Jalen Terry on the defensive end. Uh, Colin Gillespie goes for 19 with three assists. Uh, Longino, a poor shooting night, but still gets 12. But that's good enough. Uh, and they really frustrated Marquise Jacobs and Jalen Terry. You can see that frustration just in the stat line. Marquise Jacobs, three turnovers in this game, five fouls, also five fouls for Jalen Terry. That definitely hurt. And as has been the story all year, when we have to rely on the play of the bench, we struggle a bit. It was a different story when they were off the court, but we didn't get enough of them tonight. Only 39 minutes combined. Uh, we need more out of Marquise Jacobs and Jalen Terry. Only getting 39 combined minutes 21 combined points while they played well they didn't give us enough did not give us the minutes they usually would uh, even though they were quality it's not enough to get it done against Villanova um, you, you know you can see we were back and forth this was a game that you know clearly we were finding ways to attack Villanova there were 15 lead changes uh, Villanova did grow the lead to 10 at one point but we always chipped away stayed competitive in this game uh, a nice performance for Nick Ongenda, especially on the boards, getting 10 rebounds, five on the offensive end. That's almost as many as Villanova had entirely. You know, they had six offensive rebounds as a team. So great performance for him. Uh, a solid game, solid performance. I'm happy with it, especially when you're taking on the best team in the conference. And now jumping ahead to January 11th in the Big East, four games on the schedule, you see some some good wins for road teams here. Uh, Butler with a five-point win over Seton Hall on the road. Marquette, an important win over Providence. Providence, their struggles just continue this season. And a big win for St. John's, an eight-point win over UConn. That's huge for them as St. John's continues to build a tournament resume. But that one in the middle you see, 
a great win. The only home team on this evening in the Big East to win was our DePaul Blue Demons, a 77-58 win over Creighton. Let's see how they got it done. Story of the night, the starters take advantage, our guards take advantage, and we win just running away from Creighton in the end, 77-58. Roddy Andrescovili, player of the game in many regards, you know, sets a game high 21 points, uh, had a good night. Jalen Terry really starting to establish himself in these games, 18 points in this one, 7 of 13 field goal shooting, only 2 of 7 from 3. Uh, so while he struggled from deep, he was still able to fill it up, still able to find ways to get buckets, and had a great night against a very tough guard matchup, Roddy Andrescovili. If you're not familiar with that name, he will likely be playing and starting for Creighton next year. He's coming off a torn ACL injury that kept him out. But this is an international prospect that Creighton is very high on, that they know is going to earn some minutes. Very similar to Mondesta Concleras, who is starting to earn some minutes off the bench for Creighton this season. Another guy, international, coming off an injury. I was a little worried about how our front court would perform against a very big and physical Creighton team. Ryan Kelkbrenner is a seven-footer. He had six points, but Nick Ongenda had 15 and eight. Had no problem getting rebounds against this team. Same for Romeo Weems, while he's only six seven, Very good rebounder uh, for his size. A nine and seven performance for him is great to see. Uh, so while this is another game where we're without a mod Bynum, you know, we're still probably a few games away from getting JFL back as well. A really great performance, and we're starting to see the pieces fall into place for how we could be successful in the future. In my opinion, it starts with Jalen Terry at the point, and then we need to find offense where we can. Getting performances like this out of Nick Ongenda, incredibly important uh, if we want to go forward and continue to play at such a high level. A big win. It breaks that losing streak. You know, we dropped six in a row. A great way to erase that and maybe reestablish how we can be competitive in the Big East. It's a, a big first win for us in the Big East, but more importantly, a great opportunity for us uh, to see against good competition in Creighton, how we can win games like this. Now, only two days later, we have to travel to Georgetown. Let's jump to that date and see how we can do against the Hoyas. And a tough one on the road to Georgetown there, 83-69. Georgetown moves to 14-3 and on the year. You see true freshman Amina Muhammad leading the way, 26-point effort. 14-point loss, that's a tough one, but Georgetown's just playing really good basketball right now. I don't think a lot of people expect Georgetown this year to be able to return to the tournament like they did last year. That roster's seeing quite a bit of turnover, but what you've seen so far through this sim is the true freshman, Amino Muhammad, has given them the offense they've needed. They still have some good big men on that roster. A few big games in the Big East last night, a 17-point win for Villanova on the road at St. John's, a big win for UConn over Georgetown. 74-59, another great game for the Huskies out of Isaiah Whaley, 30 minutes, 12 and 14. He's having a great year. I think another, you know, possible defensive player of the year award coming Isaiah Whaley's way. Uh, 12 points, 14 rebounds, three steals and three blocks. Great performance out of him. Uh, taking on a good Georgetown front court. Uh, Georgetown just struggling to find points. Uh, Caden Rice gave him 20, but really nowhere else to be found. Only shot 35% from the field, only 32% from three. Didn't really get to the free throw line in this one. Big win for UConn, uh, getting a home win, possibly moving them into the top 25. All right, Friday, January 20th in the Big East, five big games, including us hosting the Pirates of Seton Hall. I'm just going to let this one sim, and then we'll catch the box score at the end. Let's see how we do taking on Seton Hall in this one. I see Wichita State and Memphis both ranked in a one-point win for the Tigers over Wichita State. A big win for them at home. All right, let's go back and check out what happened last night in the Big East. Starting with our game. Wow, 21-point win over Seton Hall. Great win for DePaul. Before I get to that one, looking elsewhere in the Big East. Providence, another tough loss to Creighton. Uh, their struggles just continue this year. A great win for UConn. That's two in a row, beating the best two teams in the conference. 
in the same week. That's huge for UConn, a 91-74 win over Villanova. Uh, that's going to drop Villanova a bit in the top 25. And another loss. This is now two in a row for Georgetown, an 84-74 win for St. John's. That's a big win for them as they keep their tournament hopes alive. Mark had a good win over Xavier, 82-73. As you can see, the middle of the Big East, there's some, there's some talent, there's some solid teams, but they're just kind of beating up on each other. But clearly this year, there are three teams at the top. That's UConn, Villanova, and Georgetown. I think in a tier maybe by themselves just below would be St. John's. They're playing really well, uh, led by Posh Alexander. But the big story on this night in the Big East is DePaul's 21-point win over Seton Hall, led by Jalen Terry's 40-point effort. Let's take a look at this one. I mean, we have to start with the story of the game, and that is Jalen Terry's big night out. A 40-point game went 10 of 13 from three, just a green light, and he let him fly. That is awesome to see. Finally, Jalen Terry steps up. That's big for him. Um, and even after a 40-point outing, you know, he's averaging 11.9 points per game. Great to see that type of effort against the Seton Hall team. Uh, that's not too bad. And Jameer Harris is having a decent season. He put up 20 against us. Uh, the center, Ike Obiagu, had a very nice game. He's averaging seven and five on the year, but had a probably uh, probably season high night for him of 20 points and 11 rebounds with four assists. A, a good game. But the starters, as has been the story for DePaul all season, when we're good, the starters are good, and the bench is just good enough. And that was the story in this one, a 21-point win. Ahmad Bynum finally sees some minutes again. He's back healthy. We'll make sure to get his minutes up. Uh, but we were able to, it looks like, kind of unload the bench. We had a nine-point lead at half, and then just ran away with it in the second half. Largest lead in the game was 23. Great win for DePaul. A big win at home against a good Seton Hall team. But the story of the night, and maybe one of the best offensive performances of the season for DePaul, Jalen Terry drops 40 against Seton Hall in a 21-point win. That is awesome. So Monday the 23rd, this is going to be the last day we simulate through. We're hosting 5-11 and 11 Providence. They've been 0-7 to start Big East play. A really tough start to conference play for Providence, a team that I think is better than that record. So this is one we can't overlook. Looking elsewhere in the conference, Marquette hosting Butler. Marquette's won three of their last four. Nice to see them finally putting it together a little bit. Uh, and that's a big game for both Seton Hall and Creighton. Uh, if they have any hopes of finishing in the top half of the conference, um, you know, maybe getting a good draw. Looks like they're probably not tournament teams, but definitely want to finish the season strong. Seton Hall still looking for the first Big East win as well. And before I sim this one, just want a quick look at the depth chart. Uh, Jalen Terry, I mean, so good to see what he's able to do. I'd like to see if maybe we can get him some more minutes running the point. The big thing we need to do, we need to get Ahmad Bynum some more minutes um, dealing with multiple injuries, but looks like he's getting back to 100% um, just a few more days. So I want to get his minutes back up, start to get him reacclimated to this offense. So giving him eight of Max Williams minutes. Uh, and then also I'm, I'm going to give Jalen Terry an extra run here. I want him to play the last eight minutes of the game. I think that's important. He's going to be playing 34 minutes in this one. Let's go ahead and save that. I like how that looks. A weird, kind of a low-scoring game. But looking at it, it looks like just a defensive slobber knocker of a game. Uh, it, Creighton wins by 11, but both teams just played really ugly basketball. Uh, Seton Hall shot 3 of 31 from 3, only 23% from the field. Creighton not much better, 26% from the field. Um, they go 4 of 22. I guess that's that's enough to get it done. Uh, backcourt was solid, got 25 of their 49 points but just a, a weird kind of ugly game in the Big East. All right, so in this last game, uh, we have an opportunity to go three and three during the six-game sim. Uh, if we can get a win here, we'd also move to eight and nine on the season. We'd get our third Big East win. Three Big East wins would be honestly one of the better seasons DePaul has had in the conference in the last three years. Uh, so that's, that's nothing to sneeze at as well. Um, but Providence looking for that first Big East win. Let's make sure not to give it to him in win trust. Oh, and Providence getting their first Big East win, 74-66. Uh, they, they got us. Jared Bynum having a, having a nice game, 16-6. and six. Nate Watson 
Let's see how Providence was able to get it done against us. So Providence took a 13-point lead into halftime. We chipped away at that a bit in the second half, but not able to cut it even or even get it close. Uh, there was only one lead change in this game. Providence just kind of took the lead and put it in cruise control. Uh, their largest lead in the game was 19, uh, and they were led by the effort of Jared Bynum, 16 points, six assists in this one. It's a good game for him. Al Durham, the senior transfer, having a nice season. You'd like to see a little more out of him offensively. We've, we've highlighted he's had some good games. This was not one of them. Um, so credit to Jalen Terry. Terry, another nice outing, 22 points in this one. Marquise Jacobs struggled a bit in the last few games, only eight points here, um, two turnovers and five fouls. I'm, I'm worried a little bit about that. And actually, if we can get Bynum back to 100%, I wouldn't mind seeing what he is like in the backcourt with Jalen Terry. Um, Marquise Jacobs, ideally, his role in the offense would just be spark plug off the bench, a guy who can run the second unit uh, and can fill it up. Having him in a starting role kind of puts him out of the position you would want for him. Um, in an effort like this is, is kind of exactly what I'm talking about. Starters struggled across the board. I mean, the front court really struggled against Providence. Uh, Okenda only got 1.1 rebound in 18 minutes. That's not going to get it done. Um, David Jones, 0 of 8 shooting. Romeo Weems, a fine effort, but again, you expect more out of Romeo Weems. Romeo Weems should also expect more out of himself if he really sees himself as an NBA prospect. Uh, he came back to school after pulling out of the NBA draft process. Um, but looking at Providence, you know, five players in double digits, including three starters. Justin Minaya, a good effort, 14 and five. Seems like Providence just kind of beat us up inside, controlled the pace of the game, had no issue with us. That's a tough one. Uh, tough to see Providence come in and get that win. Now I want to move on, look at the Big East Conference standings, move to the top 25, and then we're going to end this episode with a quick look at the ACC. All right, so looking at the Big East standings, three teams currently ranked in the top 25. Most teams have played eight or nine conference games. Uh, and so far, the conference being led by Villanova, as expected. Only one loss in conference. It was that road game against UConn. They're 14 and six on the year. And also you're seeing a top 25 net ranking, nine and one in their last 10. Villanova looks great. I think that's a team that could be a sweet 16 team, um, given how quality they've been and how good Colin Gillespie has been for them. Probably someone that could be fighting for Big East Player of the Year. UConn, nice start to the season, 11 and one at home. Uh, actually a better net ranking than Villanova, playing some really good basketball of late. St. John's, not quite as good. They started Big East play really strong. Uh, they've had some really tough road games recently, uh, six and three now in conference, 11 and seven overall. They're going to have to pick it up. Probably, you know, maybe they can get into the tournament with 11 or 12 losses, but that means they're going to have to be really solid uh, at the end of the season here. Looking down at the bottom of the standings, DePaul actually third from the bottom. Nice to see us in the top 10 of the Big East. That's a rarity. Seton Hall, after a nice start to the season, 0-8 in Big East play, and now 7-12 and on the year. Um, still looking for their first win in the Big East. Providence just got their first win. We gave it to them. They're now 1-7, and 6-11 and 11 overall. We're probably playing right where I would expect. You know, I, I thought this team would struggle to be 500 this year, given all the changes to the roster. Um, you know, it's a team where, you know, the players we're excited about are a little bit younger, so player development is still important. Um, but nice to see us be competitive, even in the losses we had in the sim. It was nice to see that we didn't get blown out, really. Um, stayed competitive, but the number that I'm focused on and something I'm hoping we can change in the next sim is that number right there, the away 0-4 in conference. We've got to find a way to get a win in the Big East on the road. Uh, definitely a goal for the next sim. All right, and taking a look at the top 25, seeing two Big Ten teams, two Big 12 teams, and Kentucky. The Wildcats represent the SEC in the top five. Maryland stays number one, 18 and one. What a start to the year for the Maryland Terrapins. Uh, a lot of this is dependent on the return of Eric Ayala and Aaron Wiggins. In the game, I had them both coming back. If they do come back, that's a huge boon for Maryland, and you could see Maryland as a top 10 team next year. Uh, otherwise, looking down, Ohio State kind of in a similar position to Maryland. If Dwayne Washington and EJ Liddell come back to school as expected, they could be a top five team. Absolutely. Looks like my Wolverines have dropped out of the top 25, uh, but UConn has moved in. Tulsa, 16 and four, they moved in. 
Um, BYU, 17-2, and two, nice start to the year. And one of uh, probably the surprises in the country, Indiana, 14-5. and five, They're ranked 15th in the media poll. Nice start to the year for the Hoosiers. So if there's any of those teams you'd like me to highlight in the next episode, let me know. Also, if there's any teams that you want to see their roster or maybe you want me to update their roster in the game, please let me know. Uh, drop it in the comments below. Or reach out to me either on Operation Sports or Wolverine Studios. Um, let me know, and I'll, I'll definitely make it happen in the next episode here. But as I said before we go, I've got to check out the teams in the ACC that I edited. The two that I really want to highlight are Duke and Virginia Tech. Uh, teams that I edited in the ACC include Duke, Florida State, North Carolina State, and Virginia Tech. NC State, definitely the worst of the bunch, but they were on DePaul's non-conference schedule, so I made sure to include Manny Bates, some of the other players for the Wolfpack. Um, but let's look at the Duke Blue Devils here. Uh, they're currently ranked, uh, they're 19th in the media poll, 12 and 5, a team that is likely to be led by three freshmen. And I believe all three of those freshmen are in the starting five. So let's take a look. So yes, three freshmen in the starting lineup for the 19th ranked Duke Blue Devils, led by Paolo Banchero. He's one of the top recruits uh, as part of the class of 2021. He's a sophomore in the game because I wanted to make sure he was a player that is going to go pro. I think he's definitely a candidate to be one and done. 10 points, five rebounds, and 1.7 blocks. Looks like he's playing 32 minutes a game. You may expect a little more production. Uh, but Duke only averages 75 points a game. Banchero, definitely a, a big part of their success thus far. Uh, I've really been surprised with Trevor Keels. The freshman guard, he's averaging 20 a game. He's been great for them. A.J. Griffin, hurt early in the season, hasn't played a lot of minutes. I see him now in the starting lineup, only five and four so far on the year. Uh, I wonder if he's maybe a candidate to return to school if he's not playing quite as he expected. And rounding out that starting rotation, you have returning players Mark Williams and Jeremy Roach. Also included in the rotation, real players that I've included, Wendell Moore Jr. Looks like he's just getting a few minutes behind Davis and transfer Bates Jones, as well as true freshman A.J. Griffin. And also transfer Theo John, uh, getting minutes at the five behind Mark Williams. Duke, solid team. Looks like they're getting quite a bit out of the freshman, but the big surprise is what they've gotten out of Trevor Keel so far this year. You probably want to see a little bit more out of Bonchero. Uh, maybe he came in not quite as ready for the college level, but someone that come tournament time, you're not going to want to mess with. Uh, this Duke team looks very solid. I think we'll continue to hang in the top 25. Playing in a tough ACC, not surprised that they've started five and three in conference. You know, they're definitely going to be tested night to night. Now let's look at a team that I think is going to be very special this year in the ACC. That's Virginia Tech. So pretty standard starting five for them. Uh, the bad news, probably their best returning player. looks like he's out another month. Oh, that's rough. Kiva Luma, if he does come back, that's huge for Virginia Tech. But nice to see they're still playing well in his absence. 13-5, and five, a 6-3 and three start in ACC play. Uh, taking his spot is Nahima Lean. In the backcourt, you have a true freshman, probably only true freshman that has an opportunity to earn minutes for the Hokies next year. Sean Pedula. He's averaging 11 points a game. Looks like he's playing quite a bit. Part of that could be the injuries. Uh, part of it could be, you know, Virginia Tech not having a whole lot that they're returning in that backcourt. And also the transfer Storm Murphy, averaging 13 a night for Virginia Tech. That's big for them. Nice to see they're having a solid start in ACC play. Looking at the day as a whole, North Carolina on top. Eight and one start in conference play. Virginia in the pack line, 12 and five overall, six and two start. That's great to see. Louisville, real solid start to the year. As for the teams that I've edited, actually kind of a rough start for Florida State, nine and eight. I included their freshmen, including Cleveland, who's you know probably one of the best uh, true freshman guards that's coming in to college basketball this year. If you want to see any other ACC teams highlighted, you want to see their rosters edited, let me know. I can definitely include that in the next episode. As for DePaul, we're now seven and 10 on the season. Next six games will give us an opportunity maybe to get back to 500. Uh, wow. Five of the next six on the road. So this next sim looks like it's going to be a road show. Uh, the only home game in there breaks it up in the middle against Georgetown. Another tough sim coming up for the Blue Demons. Hope you're back next time and hope you enjoyed this one. Thanks for watching.